most of the time these beings are people who have died, but they don't have to necessarily be humans. I'm still in Bangkok Airport and Dante's is in Mexico. How are you doing, Dante? Well, and you? Excellent. Excellent. We've just done one recording and I'm giggling away. That always happens. <laughs> it's a bit when, when When we do this, I just start giggling. Sweet. Well, shall we, shall we bring the guys and I'll ask some questions? Hello, and we say a fantastic day to you at this moment of your time. We thank you for allowing this transmission to take place once again, and for allowing us to experience your reality. And we ask, in which way can we be of service to you today? Nice to be talking to you again. Um, I have a particular thing that's, that's kind of burning I want to ask, and it's about invisibility. Invisibility. Now, some people say that there are like UFOs in the sky and they're invisible. I mean, is, is, is this true? Yes. So how does that invisibility work? It's a way to create a change in the outer layer of the ship. So, so as to camouflage perfectly well with the surroundings. So the ship takes on the appearance of the blue sky and clouds that are just behind it. It is done with a sort of ultra sensitive, very small camera sort of apparatus that don't even function with the traditional lenses that you consider are necessary for cameras. And this allows for the ship to replicate the background with LTVs. Okay. So that's an, an object, a, a spaceship. I can grasp something of that. But there's another kind of in invisibility, which is beings, or even entities. It's also that you can't touch them, that you walk through them. What is, does this second form of invisibility of beings and even entities, does that exist and how does it work? Well, these spirits no longer have bodies or they are a form of consciousness that is projected from the physical body. And so it is not that they are invisible, but it's that there is no body to be seen. And some spirits can nonetheless create a semblance of visibility by manifesting an orb or by manifesting some sort of bending of the electromagnetic light spectrum to create the semblance of a body such as shadows cast or figures appearing against a wall or within the movement of leaves or tree branches or something of this nature. So these beings can choose visibility by generating a fall form and the illusion of a form. Again, the idea is that these beings aren't quite invisible because there's no body to see most of the time. This is spooky stuff. <laughs> it's very, very spine tingling thinking about this. Um, what about entities? I mean, entities are like invisible influences on people. Are they the same or, or is that different? Entities, spirits, could be used interchangeably. Though we infer that you're speaking about the type of entities that become attached to humans, you could say? Yes, indeed. Entity attachment is a specific type of soul agreement. Most of the time, these beings are disincarnate, meaning people who have died, but they don't have to necessarily be humans. They're 
can be entities from other planets. And because your solar system is the home to two other destroyed planets, or civilizations, Mars is not a destroyed planet, but the civilization on Mars was destroyed, and the civilization and the entire planet of Maldek was destroyed in the general area of what is now your asteroid belt. You sometimes get entities from those places as well, and even from other dimensions entirely. This is more rare but does happen when mm, people are more inclined to, you could say, the esoteric realms. Generally, the entities come from the human realm, and they can be even one's own ancestors. And these sorts of entities generally have not relinquished their desire for the realm of human phenomenal experiences and they have a way of experiencing through their human counterpart the pleasures of the world such as intoxicants or food or sexual experiences or things of this nature we still are very resistant as, as people that if something is invisible, we think it cannot be there. We want to remind you that this is a modern phenomena that has got, gotten increasingly common since the era of television and now your screen world, where everybody is constantly visually stimulated and associate information and its credibility with its visual appeal. Before, when things could not be so well visually represented, people believed things simply because they were told that it was true. Yeah, I hadn't thought of it in that way, but you're, I think you're right. I've just come on the Bangkok SkyTrain to the airport, and everybody's looking at a gadget. I'm... I mean, I could, but I don't. I, I put it away and I think, what is this? Everybody has their gadget in their hand on, on metros across the planet. People's attention spans are growing increasingly small. Many people are now so focused on the world that exists within the phone that they don't consult and enjoy outer reality in your physical world, first of all. I, I think that it is changing our, our broad vision, our, our wider vision. Few are using this to actually learn and discover more about everything that exists out there. And most people are instead learning more short and easy to digest facts about many different random things that aren't immediately connected and therefore they are not ultimately increasing their intelligence that much. And also they're disconnecting with their will and their power, their ability to choose. They do it out of such an automatic habit that their sense of agency is just as much diminishing and this is directly connected with the power of the heart. This is a sort of phase in your evolution, and because it is causing many issues with attention and inattention, concentration, emotional regulation, and the prevention of certain ideas from reaching many people, you will eventually change how you relate with these technologies and create better solutions. But for the time being, the screen is a big fixture in your world. And those of you who wish to thrive must learn how to relate to it in a conscious way so that you don't unconsciously find yourself so 
lost in the technology that you cannot direct your mind in a controlled and preferred way without it. Okay, well, I think that ends our, um, our session for today. All right, thanks to you. It has been a wondrous opportunity for us to connect and co-create, and we wish you a fantastic rest of your day, then. On the spaceship of Babel, we are guiding through the stars on a five-year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars, a celestial encounter on a future Noah's Ark, and you will hear us coming through a whisper in the dark. There's an Ewok close behind me as we try to disembark here. Yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi as we whisper in the dark. Growing old as we speak after the minor with the strangeness of a quark. You can hear us on the phone as we whisper in the dark.